Is this recording? Is this not crazy? Look at that. Morocco. And there you have one of the flying eyes. Perfectly straight wings. And what do you see over here? A parallel matching wing sticking out from under what looks like... Okay, that's a tree. So this is like almost a kilometer wide. Maybe half a kilometer wide. And then you've got the head of this thing buried under years and years of movement and mud. Those are trees growing on top of this big area that just slid over that. How many thousands of years ago did that happen? Is that the other side right there? Is that the other wing sticking out right there? Look at that. That is amazing because it shows just how old these things are. This is ancient civilization. This is 20, 30,000 years ago. Look at that. That doesn't move over a couple days. Get in there and check it yourself. Look at how the rivers come through here. So when this came through, look at that. This is a 10,000 year flood. Normally everything washes through here. In fact, it's so high right there. This is a delta. This has been coming through. It's filled up right here. It almost covered this. All the sand is going to cover this someday. Look at that. Who made that? Where did that come from? What is it signifying? What does it symbolize? What is it communicating? Whatever it was, that message is old, old, old. I think this message is much older than the Sahara. Where is this? Morocco? Oh, I've got to look at the... I've got to see this one. I gotta find this one. This one is good. Let's get it. Okay guys, well, here we are at our flying eye in Morocco, which I've been looking for, and now I have the coordinates, so I looked it up myself. Oh, uh, but what do we know now? We know that it actually needs to be turned upside down. Well, now we have two alluvial fans to the right of it, and we see that this is actually falling off. So what we have is a cliff about 20 meters high, and... Our flying eye is disintegrating slowly over time. This is about 50,000 years old at least, maybe even closer to 100,000. And I'm going to talk about why. As you can see here, you've got the Ben Kilil River going through Abta, where that's located. But I think it's important that we see it like this. Right next to the Canary Islands. These two here that little point the first bump it's right there important if you think about the history of this land and where those islands came from how long have they been around they're the same hard bedrock that is here i hope they're not going to disappear anytime soon so what you see with this alluvial fan is that it comes right over this escarpment so these alluvial fans spread out long enough you don't even notice their fans anymore and then later they become part of the floodplain this escarpment here is, was really part of the, an alluvium that just kind of weakened over time. But as you can see from this alluvium fan, and there's more, there's about three of them here. You can see that these are not new. These are pretty old. This is a lot of minerals and you've got some plant life in here. And so I would say this is at least 10,000, if not 20, 30,000 years old coming over this. So when did this happen? This happened longer. This is a little tiny alluvial fan. Let's say it happened 10, 15,000 years over time. This doesn't just happen overnight. All the minerals and deposits come through here. This is the largest alluvial fan in the world and it's said that the sediment that's gone across it in the last layer was 50,000 years. This took millions of years to create 
This is a beautiful desert alluvial fan. The Taklimakan Deserts, Xinjiang, China, the largest alluvial fan in the world, spans 56.6 kilometers wide and 61.3 kilometers long. The most recent layer of that is 50,000 years old. We can see the flying eye right there next to one alluvial fan, another one, and another one. Now, alluvial fans technically have a lot of time, but this floodplain also once was an alluvial fan. And this is now the floodplain. So above the floodplain, this escarpment separates a new floodplain. It's been washed away flat. All this debris it's coming from up here, not over here. So we have a previous flood, but this land's broken up. And above it is the so-called bedrock, although it's not that hard. This is also sandy material in a way. Of course, it's much harder and more ancient than this floodplain. You can see the shift between the old and the new A floodplain is the target, and the alluvial fan goes onto the plain over time, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 years, depending on how big it goes. Now, if it's 60 kilometers out, that takes 50,000 years. We've got to measure ours. Maybe it takes just a couple of summers or a couple of rainstorms. It depends on the quantity of water and the debris that came down the hill. I would probably want to do some time-lapse photography. Here you see the river going up there to the point where those are. So it's right at the edge of the Atlas Mountains. It's not pure sand. There is bedrock here, but I believe that these crusts are very, very soft. Not here where the eye is, but where the debris flows out here and also over here. We can see a lot of old geography. This ancient floodway created so long ago. So when we zoom in on two our flying eye you even see how I've seen this in the sand this is like sand really but it's harder sand and now this eye is all the way completely gone almost this one's next and I fit luckily we discovered how wrong we were but this is the older as it says here the fault scarp down here is the floodplain it's not really a fault scarp but it's an escarpment debris falling down but we don't have this activity here we have really just a drop the different types of stage we're in you can see we're over here more than we're over here collapse i used to live in the desert and in my experience when you see this type of change it's from some type of mass water flood i don't really think this is a shift in tectonic plates it looks like just a scoop of the water was taken out by a flood the alluvial fans go over the escarpment that took the time to previously disintegrate our flying eye. These are two separate incidents. The first alluvial floodplain needed a period of time between the two events. How many thousands of years do you think that adds up to? The mysterious flying eyes of Atlantis were on the ground before the alluvial fan formed and before the bedrock disintegrated and created an escarpment. None of this could have happened at all during the past 5,000 years, according to mainstream science. There hasn't even been enough rain to erode the mountains this much, ignoring the Sphinx, or does it all confirm the flood myth? One thing it does confirm, these type A flying eyes of Atlantis existed thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. What put them there? Who put them there? And what was their purpose? That's what I'm still asking but it's pointing right at the water. You don't see these things inside the Rashad structure at all. You've got these scars on the land, these machines, these flying things on the side of the mountain. These are man-made. These are not natural. Look at that. All over the place, on the side of a mountain, just everywhere. And they're all facing the same direction. So these marks are 10 meters wide. There's little dots all over the land. What is going on here? All over the place. Not just one spot either. Look at this. So these, these green ones represent something like that with just a whole 
group of almost like a hundred little marks in the land but there's more see that one right there that's kind of eh i mean if it didn't have this other one right there and maybe there where well, we're seeing these shapes the same crescent what's this again and again and again they're all the same direction facing west that one's barely seen but it's still this mark upon the land i mean if i didn't know better i would think this was done by some machine that crawled across the land and now we see water going right across it now it turns out that there's groups of, of flying saucer silhouettes all over. This one is his Maritania. There aren't just a few of these things. Look, these crescent eyes, as he's labeled them, crescent eyes. And he said that he didn't really know if they were supposed to really be eyes. I think that we have something here. Look at the Eye of the Sahara. This was created by a natural dome geology, the inspiration from the eye. We've got these, this ridge here and all these circles that he's found. If I turn off the circles, they disappear. But you can still see these crescent eyes, and they're all around the Sahara. Not just around the eye of the Sahara, but we also have it in this mountain range, and this mountain range, and up here. All these mountainous areas that stick through the layer of sand that you see here, it seems like there was some connection to people who were able to fly. Somebody was able to use these. Now, this is the Mauritania one. I've got one for every single area that I just mentioned. And this was compiled by Anthony himself. He has been working on this for a while. He's doing something different now regarding water in North America. Could this be a ground directional system that is similar to the one that we had in the United States in the early 1900s. These arrows went everywhere across the desert showing pilots which way to go. Is this what we're seeing in the Sahara Desert? Over the side of the mountain. Look at that right there. It's like a flock that's man-made. Look at that. Oh, those just appeared one day. What is this? I mean, it's going with the water. It's going with the sand. Where are these things? They're in the floodways of the Rashad structure. Look at all those marks. And they're all south. There's a few of them on the mountainsides over here, too. But in the Rashad structure, you don't... I was studying this like crazy for just hours and hours. I had nothing else and i didn't see any of these things now i find out they're everywhere especially down here where i was down here i was looking at this beautiful striations of sand and now I find out that there's these weird freakazoid look at this one i mean look at that that is look at these marks look at these marks okay that right there is what i call the skeleton of the bedrock sticking through that's bedrock skeleton right there but now let's go over here and look at these marks that's not skeleton those are marks in the sand and the thing that's crazy about them is we continuously see the same shape some of them are perfect and they just go all across here what's this over here okay i mean that to me looks like when you look at stuff like this from the the air you're, you're saying okay is that man-made or is that natural i mean i've been looking at a lot of stuff you don't see dots like that dots that to me that's got to be man-made we're talking about thousands of dots now that right there to me says part of the ground but okay maybe this this one's just natural but some of them look too close to this flying eye shape that we that's supposed to be natural they're all going the same direction okay here we see normal that's normal normal over here we see some stuff that's not so normal like like chicken pot that's normal right there look at this look at that one the same shape this is it we're seeing this everywhere. Look at that. Right there, right there, right there. The same geoglyph. Look at this one. You don't get this shape again and again and again in the mountainside just by nature and accident. Look at that. There's one there. There's one there. There's one here. There's one here. We're zoomed all the way in. So this is just a few meters wide. Here's another one. Look at that. Got the eye in the middle. There's another one. Let's see where we are. So we're in the mountains just south east look at this one the one that's closestly found to the eye look at that so that's a tree we see trees no problem with the trees right we see and then we've got this this shape is it is it the new moon is it like uh the sliver of the moon the muslim moon the crescent so the star and crescent symbol became strongly associated with the ottoman empire in the 19th century a symbol that has been used throughout the middle east extending back to pre-islamic time especially by the byzantine empire and crusader state could they be the the islamic crescent <laughs>
According to this paper, the Western Sahara had reactivation periods triggered by humidity. This Tamen Reset River Basin was like the Nile. The Sahara Desert still gives the Amazon a lot of its nutrients. These mountain ranges are scattered with evidence of some type of campaign scattering symbols that also look like flying eyes, like manta rays, across the Sahara Desert, including the Rashad structure. Could that campaign have been to remove the water from the Sahara Desert? Could this campaign have been some type of ancient massive exodus of water using some type of flying machines? 300,000 years, do you think that the UFOs that are seen in the skies are from extraterrestrials? Or is it possible that the UFOs people spot are actually flown by the descendant of those ancient civilizations that had this technology. Occam's razor says they were probably made by land-dwelling man, but across this entire Sahara Desert, a campaign of symbol, one man? I'll show you some from the Adrar Plateau, the Tibesti Plateau. All these different mountain ranges have these same symbols. There's a delta in here that could have been an ancient waterway leading up to what I call the concentric circles of Atlantis. Here is the actual scarring from the river. You can see it here. You can see the ancient riverways that lead up to that area and bringing sand out into the Sahara Delta. Just a quick tour of the Nile. This type of technology was found in the Nile. This type of technology was probably all over the Sahara Desert. Dendera Temple, hieroglyphics of light bulb. If anything has come from this, one thing that I do know is I never would have known about this if it hadn't been for Anthony Tunastal. Here's a Steemit link. I want you to take note of that. Steemit.com slash Africa slash at Anthony Tunstall slash Eyes of Sahara because he has documented one, two, three, four, five, six here. And by the way, there's others that are not here. I'm aware of. Look at those red marks. These marks going across the Sahara Desert. I mean, those are trees down there. In the middle of nowhere, amongst the empty, vacant desert, you've got these marks. They don't really have any water or any, any resource. These marks have a center point. They're symmetrical. There's been some speculation on whether whether or not they are moving water. There's no water here, but I've heard them blamed for the water having been taken away from the Sahara Desert. What exactly could they be? And why are there thousands of them across the Sahara? In this eye of Sahara alone, I can find a thousand of these. If not just the flying manta, but dots. And if I can count the circles, then tens of thousands. It's not just one type of land they're marked on. You've got mountaintops with grain of bedrock and grain of non-sand foundations. I'd like to see that up close. What is that? Is that stone? And these strange curved-like wings. And they're all going in the same direction. The top is north. These haven't been rotated. They're all going the same direction. And sometimes you see, you see several of them all going in the same direction, all with the same shape. Is that natural? Did that just happen naturally? All across the Sahara Desert? Directional? Guide? Only seen from the sky. But wouldn't flying machines know which way west is? What other type of communication could be happening here.